what's going on YouTube and welcome back to my channel if you've been here before thank you for returning if you are new to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button and everybody here make sure you drop a comment and hit that like button hit that like button if you really like the video as you saw by the title and that thumbnail we have a good one today this is Coco she has not been to a grooming salon in a very long time they have tried different grooming salons and four grooming salons yes i said four turned her away and today we are going to be attempting a haircut on her let's see how that went this is one of those videos where we had to just hop right into it i know i usually do a before video it was so hectic this day i was not able to get one but i just had to hop right into the groom i wasn't even able to see her or just do like a welcome video for her you know like i usually do going to their kennel this was just a lot and this is also one of my older videos so it was me still getting kind of in the swing of things with grooming videos and figuring out what i was going to do so this video was a little bit all over the place but <laughs> i did catch the majority of the groom so let's get straight into this video Now, as I stated, she has been to four other groomers and those four other groomers turned her away. And to be completely honest, I definitely understand why they turned her away. She, I don't know that she's never been properly groomed before or if they waited until she was a year and a half to try and get her groomed. But I definitely understand why other groomers turned her away because she, for certain things, definitely will try to hurt herself. She tries to throw herself off the table. So I get where the other groomers are coming from. I think for her, she takes a little bit more patience and not every groomer has that. I can say that for sure because I've worked with other groomers that have said that I would never do a dog like that or I just don't have the patience to do a dog like that so and I, I get it completely because it can be challenging for the dog it can be challenging for the groomer it can be stressful for the dog and the groomer so I, I definitely understand um I am one of those people that have a little bit more patience and a little bit more determination to get a dog adjusted to the grooming process so I don't mind working with challenging dogs like this now in terms of everything that she fought me for for the grooming and you'll see in the video as it continues to go on a lot of it was her front feet i wouldn't necessarily say it was the full body haircut just in general it was really just her front feet that she fought me the most for also she doesn't like the sound of the clippers that is where she struggled that i believe is what her fear was for sure with grooming just in general Now, when the owner dropped off, I did ask him a series of questions just about what she does when she's being groomed because when he told me that four other groomers turned her away, it was a little alarming. I gotta be honest, it was a little alarming because you never know what you're getting into when you have a dog that was turned away from four other groomers. So it's like, okay, well, what does she do? Does she bite at them? Does she bite at the clippers? Like, does she throw, like, what does she do? And he says he doesn't know. He said he told me that he didn't know and that the groomers just told him that he they wouldn't groom the dog now if this is true because i will say sometimes when you are explaining to an owner that you can't groom their dog they just stop listening at hey we can't groom your dog now i'm not saying that these people did that i don't think they did that i just don't think he really got a full understanding as to what she does so when he picked her up i did explain to her you know how she behaves with grooming and i told him i said listen it could be a fear thing she could be very scared and not understanding the process of grooming so i asked him you know well when she was a puppy did she get groomed when she was a puppy he said not that often in this type of setting and i explained to him that could be why that she doesn't like grooming or why she has a hard time in grooming and if you know anything about terriers Yorkshire terriers schnauzers any terrier really if they don't like something they're going to fight you on it they're going <laughs> and they're going to fight hard <laughs> they 
will fight to the death and that was one of the things that i was actually trained on when i was becoming a groomer they said when you work with a terrier and terriers are stubborn so they will fight you on things they don't like to get done and they will see who's going to break first as long as it's not anything that's going to harm the dog if you don't bring for break first they will let you do whatever you need to get done on them But what I did notice when I asked him, is it a fear thing? Like, is she fearful? He was like, no, 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 no. She's not fearful. She's not scared of nothing. She's a tough dog. But it's not, when a groomer asks you if the dog is fearful, it's not their behavior and their demeanor when they're around you. It is, is she afraid of the process of being clippered? Is she afraid of the grooming salon? And nine times out of 10, it is a fearful thing when they act like this because they don't know what to expect so no she yes she knew i wasn't going to hurt her but no she didn't know what to expect so she was scared she was scared that's why you kind of saw her trembling a bit but yeah so i had to explain it to the dad when he picked up and he was very understanding the whole family they're super sweet they're super understanding they just didn't understand what the whole concept of her not being able to be groomed she just said he told me that the groomers just said that they will not groom her she needs to go to a vet and be sedated now with the wrong person absolutely sedate her she does need to be sedated but with the right groomer she can get through it without being sedated and she got through it without being sedated some parts were a bit of a struggle but like i said the biggest thing that she struggled with was her front legs and her front feet she did not like the clippers or the nail clipping of her front feet but she did great for the back legs and you'll see once I start grooming her I did something different with the front feet as opposed to running the clippers down her legs so just to quickly touch on her bath before we hop into her groom every single time a dog checks in we have to do an assessment on the dog and we check their skin coat ears nails and teeth now when i did an exam on her coat i noticed that it was very oily and so was her skin so i opted to do an apricot shampoo on her and the apricot shampoo removes all the oils the reason why you want all of the oils removed out of the dog's coat and the skin is because the clippers will not cut through that coat if there's too much oil in it and sometimes it can clog the pores on their skin if there's too much oil and that can cause like those bumps on the dog's skin which is why when a dog has not been groomed for a while I do believe that that is what's going on with their skin and their coat is all that's why you see all the bumps and everything it's because they haven't been groomed in a while and the oil on their coat and their skin have clogged their pores I think so I nobody has said I was wrong so I'm gonna assume that's what it is <laughs> And after I did the apricot shampoo, I went in with a milk bath conditioner just to add a little bit of moisture back into her coat so it wasn't completely dried out as I had to brush her out and get some tangles out of her. Now, for her brushing, she was not a fan of the brushing, obviously on her front legs. You, as you can see, brushing out her body, she was okay for, well, I'll say semi-okay, because she didn't like it. You know, no dog really likes to be brushed. Well, no, some dogs really enjoy it, but a lot of dogs don't like to be brushed. So she was okay for the brushing of her body, but once I got to her front chest and her feet where a lot of those tangles were, she was not a fan of it. But what I was kind of just saying in the video, I had to mute the clip because company plays music in the background and you can't play that on YouTube but what I was kind of saying in the clip is because she doesn't get groomed that often or hasn't been groomed that many times in her life being a year and a half old she kind of need to be treated like a puppy so introducing her to the brush so if she's throwing a fit you can't really stop it because that's letting them know hey if I act up I get to do whatever I want I don't have to get brushed if I act up you kind of just have to keep going reassure them while you're doing it but keep brushing them out and keep going but if you stop just know they got the upper hand <laughs> and dogs know that dogs know they have the upper hand and when they have the upper hand so sometimes you just kind of have to control the situation it's not always easy some dogs will keep fighting and if they keep fighting and you feel like they're getting too stressed out we have to discontinue the services but if you can get a hold of the situation, 
it would be better for the dog as opposed to stopping the service completely. But as I stated, there's a completely big difference to a dog throwing a temper tantrum because they don't want it done as, a, as opposed to a dog that is super stressed out trying to hurt themselves. So you kind of have to decipher between the two of them of what it is. And what I will say is usually you can decipher the two by the dog's behavior and the dog's reaction to certain things. Now, sometimes it can be really difficult to see which one it is, whether they're just upset because they're getting it done or whether they are physically going to hurt themselves by getting it done. So sometimes it can be a bit challenging to figure out which one it is, but usually you can tell that they're able to get it done by analyzing their behavior while you're doing it if they're giving it a break and letting you do it that means they're learning and they're understanding that it's not going to hurt them and they will eventually let you get it without any fight now if they are continuing to fight without any breakthrough or anything else then you know they're going to try and hurt themselves by continuing the service and those are the dogs that we generally turn away for grooming services and refer out to a vet So if you ever bring your dog to a corporate setting for grooming and they recommend your dog out to a vet for grooming, just know nine times out of 10, that groomer tried their absolute hardest and tried every measure that they could to get your dog groomed, but they are stopping the services because they do not want your dog to hurt themselves because believe it or not, dogs will try and hurt themselves and they do it very quickly. Like sometimes you don't even catch it when they do it, but they do it very quickly. Like you can just be working on a dog and the dog will snap. You can be working on a dog and the dog will throw himself off the table. So it's, it's not that we want to turn your dog away. It's that we, it's that it's best that we turn your dog away. But now we're going to hop into the haircut and I'm going to start doing the haircut and I'll just explain what I'm doing and what length I'm doing and what I did on her front legs. And then we'll hop into the topic. So for her groom, when her dad dropped off, he told me that they wanted her body shorter, but they wanted her face kind of left alone. Now. The details of the face that they gave me, he wanted her chin shorter because when she drinks water, it droops water all over the house. And I completely understand because I have a dog that does that. She actually needs a haircut now. <laughs> but they wanted her, the sides of her face left long and then they wanted the top of her face left long because they wanted to pull it up into a little top knot ponytail, which, you know, I'm like, okay, that's cute. But they had already cut around her face and cut her bangs. So the part for people who want to pull their dog's hair up into a top knot ponytail they want to point it to the top of their head look at her spinning because she's happy <laughs> the part that gets pulled up into a ponytail is their bangs and then a little bit in between their eyes so the bridge of their nose into their whatever that bone is in between their eyes it all gets pulled up into a ponytail so when you start to hack at that and cut at that at home it makes it harder to pull it into a ponytail and it look deep deep it looked decent and neat <laughs> that's that's what deed is it's decent and neat combined <laughs> but it makes it harder to pull into a ponytail and make it look neat so leave the bangs alone because that actually pulls into the ponytail and gives it that little kind of that curve in the front of the ponytail that everybody loves so much that makes it look like like a styled ponytail But nevertheless, that's what he asked for. So they wanted the face, the sides of the face and the top of the head left long. And they wanted me to take the chin up and the body shorter. So on the body, I did a zero guard comb. Um, if y'all saw my last video, y'all know I love zero guard combs. I don't know why. I just think they look so cute. They look adorable on dogs. They look perfect. It's like the perfect length. So if you're ever curious as to what length you want your dog, you want them still a bit fluffy, but not too short. 
go with a zero guard comb and a looks absolutely adorable as well but a zero guard comb is that length that will give you some time in between your next grooming session so if you get an a an a you got to come back in I would say anywhere between four and six weeks if you get a zero guard comb it can push you out to eight weeks so zero car combs I always recommend I love them but that's what I did on her and then for her front legs I actually scissor her front legs because when I brushed out her front legs just with the brush and I saw how she reacted I did not want to put her through that again with trying to clip her front legs and then the guard comb getting stuck on her leg and she get cut I didn't want to risk anything injuring her so I opted to scissor her front legs but her back legs as you can see she was okay with me clippering down so I did that Now for her face, I was not going to take clippers to her face. I refused to do that. One, because they asked for her hair not to be cut short on the sides of her face and her top on the top of her head. And then two, because I knew she was not going to do well for clippering on her face. So I did not do that. And even if they did ask me to cut down her face significantly, I would have just hand scissored it because I don't want to run the risk of cutting her or cutting her eye, cutting her ear, a tongue, anything like that. So hand scissoring was the way to go. Now, the point where I knew that I would be able to get her groom done, because I know a lot of people are gonna ask, why did I attempt this dog? Well, I knew that I would be able to get it done when I realized that her main thing for freaking out was her front legs. and that is very common very very common in dogs they freak out for their front legs because they don't like clippering that's too close to their face they don't like the vibration on their front legs they have more control of kind of backing up and thrashing around so I knew I would be able to get the haircut done but the front legs I knew would be a bit challenging so I knew I would have to walk her and coach her through that and that's not an issue for me because again I deal with a lot of challenging dogs so I do that on a daily basis as it is And which you'll see when I start her front legs, I am stern with her, but I'm also patient with her at the same time. So I do believe that, that is something that you can be, you can be stern, but you can be patient at the same time. I can tell you to knock it off, but I can wait for you to knock it off. I can tell you to calm down, but I can wait for you to calm down. So I think that's why me grooming her was the best option for her because one, I was able to get it done. And then two, I have the most patience. <laughs> <laughs> my family always tells me I have the patience of a saint which I don't know where I get it from because not a lot of people in my family have patience but <laughs> you know it is what it is so I just learned to go slow with her and be patient with her like you have to do with most challenging dogs and as you can see she got a lot of hugs during her grooming process just to let her know that she was okay and I also think that helped her bond with me so she was able to trust me and gain a lot of trust with me during the grooming process. So when I start to clip her front legs, which you'll see very shortly, you'll notice that she doesn't like it at first as she's thrashing around now, but then she calms down and she lets me do it. And it's because I do believe she thought I was going to clipper her legs. So scissoring a lot of dogs can tolerate because they can't feel it they can't feel the clippers clipping the hair off there is no metal hitting their legs there is no vibration to their legs so nine times out of ten most of the times ten times out of ten they're okay with scissoring the front legs and a lot of dogs have notes in the computer that say scissor the front legs because it is the absolute safest way to go in my opinion it is the safest way to go because again like I said they can't feel it so nine times out of ten they're gonna be good for it now right here I'm trying to scissor around her foot and she did not like that because I was holding her feet and pulling the hairs out from in between her feet but again just letting her have her moment telling her that it's okay and working our way to it now like for every groomer I opt for safety first so I hook her up to the groomer's helper because that's going to keep her in place it's going to keep her from throwing around the table giving her less range of motion where she can dance around and move too quickly when i'm scissoring her legs 
she fights for it at first but nothing like when she was off of the groomer's helper and then she allows me to do it because she realizes she can't really throw herself around and then me scissoring around her foot is not as bad as it seems because I'm not touching her paw pad I'm not scissoring her foot I'm not doing anything to her nails Another reason why dogs freak out for you holding their front legs is because you have to put their leg in a position of almost like a lock so they're not able to keep jerking their foot back and forth because as they're pulling their feet away and you're trying to scissor you can accidentally cut the paw pad, you can cut the leg, you can cut anything on the dog. So we have to hold our thumbs behind the elbow of the dog or what is considered their elbow so they are not able to jerk their foot and that gives us control over their leg as opposed to the dog having control over their leg as you can see i'm holding her foot because i'm trying to get an angle of her foot so i can scissor the rest of that loose hair and she has more control over it but when i hold her leg like that with my thumb behind her elbow i have more control over her she relaxes she, she allows me to do it so if you're ever grooming your dog at home and you want to know a type of restraint to help you hold their front legs where they don't have control and they're not jerking it, put your thumb behind the elbow and just hold the top of their leg and that gives you more control where they can't jerk their leg and that also creates a safer grooming space because your clippers are not stabbing at them, they're not stabbing at you, the scissors are not, scissors are not cutting anything on them and it's not cutting anything on you. one last tip I do want to give for people that are trying to groom their dog at home or new groomers who are grooming dogs and you have a difficult dog on the table try and keep one hand on the dog I know it can be difficult I know it can be hard but if you keep one hand on the dog you can kind of predict their movements of what they're going to do next now the more you groom the more you learn dogs body language and you'll learn what they look like or what their body stance looks like when they're about to move or about to do something but until you get to that point in your grooming career or pet parents that are grooming their dogs at home if you're not in tune with your dog for the grooming process because there's a difference of being in tune with your dog just in general and being in tune with your dog for them being groomed dogs can be completely different at home as opposed to when they're being groomed so take some time and hold your dog get used to them if you're grooming them at home and then also keep your hand on your dog so you can know what makes them move what makes them jump and then also you can kind of understand when the dog is going to move and you can kind of predict their movements and you can work from there so you don't get cut and your dog doesn't get cut because at the end of the day no one wants to get cut no one wants to get bit and no one wants any mishaps during grooming so keep your hand on your dog so you can predict the movements and then study dog's body language and that will help you with your grooming I promise So as we're winding down to the end of the video, I do still have a topic. It is a very quick one and it's basically based off of this video. So it's not a very long detailed one, but it is important for me to talk about. So I do want to just touch on it very quickly and we're going to get right into that. So the topic that I want to talk about is the importance of bringing your dog to the grooming salon when they are puppies. So most grooming salons, if not all grooming salons, and I could be wrong, so correct me in the comments if I am, accept puppies at eight weeks old. Should you bring your puppy in at eight weeks old? Sure. I mean, I don't see why not. But I would say the latest you want to bring them in is around nine weeks. If you have a puppy that young, if you're getting a puppy at four months, bring them in right away. The reason being is because puppies retain information quickly if it is consistent information. So if you're bringing your dog in on a consistent basis and they're learning the same process over and over and over again, and I mean every three to four weeks, not every four to six weeks, they're going to retain that information as quickly as they can so that when they get about five and a half, six months old, seven months old, whenever you want their haircut done, they are able to get it. Now, when you have a puppy and it's eight nine weeks old and your thought process is okay my dog doesn't need a haircut your dog doesn't have to get a haircut when puppies come in they get a puppy trim that is their face cleaned up their sanitary cleaned up and their paw pads and we round their feet if you are getting a haircut if you go to a groomer that gives your eight or nine week old puppy a haircut right off the bat 
don't go back to that groomer. Groomers, y'all can feel how y'all feel about it. I said what I said. No puppy should get a haircut at eight to nine weeks old. They are way too young. That's like cutting your newborn baby's hair. Don't do it. Get them used to the process because if you're cutting them too early, when they get older, they can freak out for it. They can get cut. They can be bad for grooming. So bring them in on a consistent basis so they are understanding the process of grooming and getting used to grooming and not being fearful of grooming like they're going to get hurt or going to get injured. So bringing them in while they're younger is a good thing and not a bad thing. So when you bring your puppy in at six months and you say, hey, I want a full body haircut and your groomer tells you, hey, you can't get a full body haircut, you won't be in shock as to why because you now know that they need practice before they get full body haircuts or they will turn out fearful or aggressive for grooming and nobody wants that. So if you don't take away anything from this video, train your puppies for grooming. Bring them in on a consistent basis. I'm gonna get a t-shirt that say that. <laughs>okay now we are down to the last part of the video and we're going to take a look at her before sorry guys this was the best one i could get but now we're going to take a look at her after and she looks a million times better than what she did when she first came in i'm not a fan of her face but again they didn't want me to touch it make sure you guys smash that like button subscribe if you have not done so already drop a comment down below i will catch y'all in the next video love you guys